right? And then we had started our service this morning, we said, Hosanna to the Son of David, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Today starts Holy Week, the time we celebrate the Last Supper, the washing of the feet, Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection as our Lord and Savior. And today, Palm Sunday, you all have your, your palm branches, right? Or as many of you as we could get you a palm branch. We have our palm branch, and we're waving them and we're shouting, Hosanna to the Son of David, Hosanna in the highest. Do you have any clue why you're doing that? Other than the fact it's written in that little piece of paper that you're carrying around and it says that you're supposed to be doing that? Right? Why are we doing that? If you actually listen to the text that I read to you just a few minutes ago, in our text today there's no mention of palm branches at all. Right? It says, Matthew says, they cut branches from the trees and spread them out on the road. It doesn't say they were palm branches. It just says that they were branches. John is the only gospel that actually says that there are branches of palms. Mark talks about leaves from the field, and Luke doesn't even mention branches at all as they put their cloaks down over the road for Jesus to ride across. So why do we need all of these palms? Why do we do this? What is our need of doing this? What is it that we need? Well, this was a sign of who Jesus really was as he rode into the city, into Jerusalem that, that day. The fact that the crowd was waving or throwing down palms had meaning, meaning to those who were present that day. We may not understand exactly, but they did. Just as the colt and the donkey held meaning to the people that gathered there to usher Jesus into the city of Jerusalem. The first, the first people that would have been there, they would have just walked into Jerusalem. They wouldn't have bothered finding a donkey and a colt to ride in on, but Jesus had to. Some of them would have even found it interesting that Jesus decided to ride into the city on a donkey. Personally, I find it amazing that he could ride a donkey and a colt, as Matthew says he did. He was the first stunt rider, I guess. <laughs> so he rode into the city, and others are, people around him are saying, what, what is this guy doing? Why isn't he just walking like the rest of us? And some of the people around him would have said, wait a minute. This is Zechariah. Right? This is the prophecy that they would have known that we read this morning from Zechariah chapter 9, that the Messiah would ride into the city on a donkey and her colt. And Jesus humbled himself to ride into the city on the donkey. We also need to know the rest of the story of the prophecy from Zechariah, right? The essential themes of Zechariah chapter 9 are the defeat and destruction of all foreign nations and the return and restoration of the country of Israel. It's the beating of the foreign enemy that has taken over our land. Those who would have known this text would have seen in Jesus the coming warrior that was going to bring about the end of Rome's rule and God's wrath upon Rome in the, the confines of their city. They saw him as a great king ushering in a new regime. Jesus would be the true messianic fulfillment of the freeing of the nation of Israel, Israel from the bondage of the Romans. And they needed a hero. They needed a great king that was ready to lead them into battle. And this leads us to why we have these things. The use of palms in the book of Maccabees, which is an apocryphal book, is always related to military victories. Were those in the crowd expecting Jesus to lead them to a great military victory? Did they see in him the coming of the fulfillment of the prophecy of Zechariah that would lead to the restoration of Israel and the vacating of their land by Rome? Is that why they were shouting Hosanna? We use Hosanna, right? It's up here. I noticed on the, the banner that are hung up this morning. Hosanna. Hosanna. We say it in our worship. We've said it in our worship. We're going to say it again today in our worship. It's used in our celebration of Holy Communion. But do any of us know what the word Hosanna actually means? Actually, 
Hosanna comes from the Hebrew, Hebrew words yasha, which means to save, and na, which is a request. It's a word that means request. Combined, they give us the word yashana, which is O oh, save. Hosanna is a request for salvation. Did the people crying out to Jesus know what they were saying? Know what they were asking Jesus for? They were crying for Jesus to save them from the Romans, to fulfill Zechariah's prophecy, to rid the land of the foreigners in their midst. We need a king. We need a savior. We need a warrior that's going to be willing to lead us into battle, to save us as the Messiah and rid our land of these people that have taken it over. So today we reenact Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem and wave our palms for the military victory and shout, Hosanna to the Son of David! Save us, O Son of David! Do we need that? Do we need that military victory? Do we need a superman for a savior, one who never dies, who would not think of doing something as silly as allowing himself to be handed over and killed? Just what do we need? What do you need? <laughs> Maybe to look at this at a little bit different angle as we enter into Holy Week. What is it that Jesus needs. There is only one thing in all of the writings of all of the New Testament that Jesus ever says he needs. One thing. We see that this morning in our text. Then Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord has need of them. The only thing in all of heaven and earth that Jesus ever says that he needs is a donkey. Right? He needed it to fulfill the prophecy spoken about him and to fulfill the plan that God the Father had set forth before him. Remove this cup if possible, but yet not my will, your will be done. I need to ride a donkey into Jerusalem. Just what do you need? Today is Palm Sunday, right? And what is this Palm Sunday all about? A triumphal entry into Jerusalem? Yes. It is about that. Is it about green palms being waved in a military victory? If we take the true biblical meaning behind waving of palms, then yes, it can mean that too. But I think it means more than that. It's more than just these green things that we wave around or fold into crosses. Today, we get the image of the palm but not in the sense of green vegetation. The palm and the hand figure prominently into everything that's going to happen this coming Holy Week. Today, the palms are used to obtain a donkey and a coat for Jesus to ride upon. The disciples use their hands to place their garments over top of them, to throw branches on the ground for Jesus to be able to ride into Jerusalem. On Thursday, Monday, Thursday, palms are used to wash the feet of the disciples. Even when the disciples question his washing of their feet, Jesus still ties the towel around his waist, bows in servanthood, and washes their feet, giving them and showing them a new way of life. There is a palm in the hand that blesses, breaks, and distributes the bread and offers the cup of the new covenant at the table prepared by our Savior, in the loving presence of our, all of our enemies, His loving hands that give us the bread and the wine, we receive strength and direction in our walk as disciples throughout all of our lives. The palms of prayer after the Last Supper pressed firmly together in the Garden of Gethsemane as He prays fervently to His Father to think of a different way to make this happen. But even if He can't, not my will be done, but yours. On Friday, we see in the palms of Simon of Cyrene 
the need to take up our cross and follow after Jesus daily, the fact that we may have to suffer for our faith. We see the hands uh, that are nail scarred as Jesus is crucified and hung up on the cross. Palms are not green. And if we follow them and use them the way that God asks us to, they're going to lead us to possibly do things that we're not ready or willing to do. But if we can truly say, Hosanna to the Son of Davis, Jesus, save us, then we need to be ready to use our hands and our bodies in service to Him. We see in Philippians that Christ emptied Himself and was obedient to death, even death on a cross. So we should empty ourselves and look at what we truly need. See, Jesus gave up the charge of His life and maybe this is exactly what each and every one of us should do. If we can empty ourselves of any notion that we are in charge and the notion that we have an equal footing with God and offer ourselves wholly to Him and to His service, then maybe we will see what we need in a king and a warrior to lead us into a triumphant battle to the salvation that we so eagerly expect and want. It's something that we've already been given in Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Hosanna to the Son of David. Jesus, save us. Just what is it that you need?